Hey everyone, welcome to Ask Julie Anything. Tonight, oh actually, tonight we're going, doing, doing a, a speed round. We're calling it the Power Hour with Julie because last week there was something like 50 plus 57. questions, 57 <laughs> questions that didn't get answered. And we doubled up the session last week and, and we were live for two hours. Um, so we're so grateful that everyone's joined us tonight. We're going to take your questions live once again. If you're comfortable taking the mic, awesome. We, we appreciate that. Um, and if you can, hi, Kaylin, hi, Donna. If you can, uh, talk to us in the chat and switch your, your mode to all panelists and attendees so we can all, all see what, what's happening in the conversation. And are um, we doing it so that we can hear them again? I have so much fun doing that. Let's do that. Let's do that again. I am going to start us off with Donna. Donna, I'm going to give you the permission to have your mic. And if you'd like, can you hear us, Donna? Hi, Steph. Can you hear me? Hey, yeah. Hey. Hi, Julie. By all means. Hi, Donna. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you good, ladies? Fine. Good. Wet. <laughs> Wet? Wet. It's been pouring and my roof oh. started leaking and it was like, oh, lovely day. Oh, we could use the rain here. That's for sure. We're dry. Oh, yeah. You could use the rain, but not in your not in your kitchen. That you no, just no, no, no. You just redid. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's fine. It's oh, fine. No. There, there could be a lot worse. Yes, this is true. Okay, so I've got a question that came to me from one of my clients, and I think it's a great question. Okay. Um, we're kind of curious on where um, the supplement ingredients are sourced. Like for adored beasts, like all of our supplements? Yeah, yeah. well, all supplements in general or adored beasts, where, where are they sourced? Well, I know there's been, we've had lots of questions this week about that. And um, I'm actually really glad that you that you are asking it because I was going to bring it up because we've, we've had, oh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a touchy subject because for me to answer completely honestly, well, I'm going to answer completely honestly without trying to deface or, or, or put down anybody else's products or anybody else's supplements. So first of all, what I got, what I have to say is that adored, at Adored Beast, one thing that, that I'm pretty adamant about is that I kind of have blinkers on and, and that's a good thing. And it's a bad thing. Cause I never know what's going on out in the world. Right. Like mm -hmm. I don't, I remember when adored beast won for Canada won the, um, the award for the, like you have a store, right? You have a store. Don't well, I'm home base. Kind, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So the stores voted on their favorite company and we got voted in for the best company of the year based on, on stores. Nice. And they interviewed me and she said to me, so, you know, it was a really nice interview and I was talking and blah, blah, blah. And then she said, so who's your competition? And I was like, so taken back because <laughs> I didn't even know who my competition was. Right. And if you ask Dion, Dion would probably know like my business partner. Yeah. But from my perspective, I don't look at us as competition, right? Like I don't, I don't look at, com at being who's out there and who we're competing against. I look at from the second that I did Adored Beast, it's, it's about what's the best I can do with really, really sick animals. Cause there's lots of supplements out there that are, are good, that are really good supplements. But I wanted to bring to the world what I used in my own clinic that I knew after 20 years of using it made animals' lives exponentially better. Right. So I didn't pay attention to what does this person use and what does that person use. I just paid attention to what I knew worked, what I knew in my heart and through clinical practice that helped 
animals so much. So when I, when I was sourcing stuff at my old clinic, don't forget, like I was sourcing stuff for maybe, you know, a thousand patients at a time or something like that. Right. Whereas when I started doing adored beast, I was, um, I was, I was not, I had to go into the manufacturing end of it, which I didn't really do before. Right. So when I started sourcing, I had, I had a massive eye opening experience with that. And Dion, I have to, I have to say that, that Dion was probably one of the most, um, patient business partners anyone could have ever had because it took me over a year and a half of after we opened mm -hmm. to find not only the right ingredients but the right company to actually compound it and mix it and and whatever so when i want when i when i talk to you guys about what i'm gonna how i'm gonna answer this question nothing can you can't look at you can't just look at sourcing you have to look at a supplement but unless it's unless it's like one product right like it, if it's like if it's a bottle of something with just one product in it then 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 possibly you can but even that is different and, I, and so i'm going to tell you how i came to what i how I, what i do and why i'm so transparent about d does some stuff come from china it does the 100 million percent and if you go on my sourcing video i'm super transparent about that so what happened was when i went into the manufacturing business i found out that there are certain things i found out first of all that there's all different ways of certificate of analysis being presented to you right yeah. so you can have a certificate i was looking at some very and i'm not going to name names but some really, really big organic certified manufacturing companies to do the products. Mm -hmm. And when you get a, when you get something of like a country of origin, that country of origin doesn't necessarily mean even where it's processed. The country of origin means where it's grown. So I'm going to use this as an example. If you go into a grocery store anywhere in the world and you buy BC salmon, what right. would you, what would you think? If you got a certificate of analysis, it would say that this is British Columbia salmon, right? right. And everybody's like, oh my God, the beautiful Atlantic ocean and or, or Pacific ocean and BC and everybody has, thinks of this pristine, incredible stuff, right? Yeah. All the majority of BC salmon is farmed in BC and it goes to China to get processed and then it's sold. So it's grown in BC, but it's processed in China, but they're legally allowed to say that it's BC salmon. It's, it's country of origin is BC. So there is, there are, when I started looking at stuff, I'm like, okay, this is cool. This is from Brazil. This is from, India, this is from North America, this is from Canada, this is from, from the UK, this is from the Netherlands, this is from wherever, this is super awesome. And then I realized and found out that there are, like I said, there is something that is made in Canada or sourced in Canada or sourced in the Nether Netherlands does not necessarily mean that it's grown, manufactured, processed, the whole nine yards in that country. It's got country of origin. So I started looking into it more. And, and the other different thing that people have to understand about Adored Beast is that I have chosen, chosen this, right? I've chosen to create formulas that don't just have herbs in them, right? my formulas have nutraceuticals and i and when i when i talk about the difference of nutraceuticals herbs probiotics there they have different classifications and nutraceuticals are there are people that go 
it should just be herbs. It should just be herbs. It should just be herbs. There should be no nutraceutical component in, in this, right? Yeah. A nutraceutical is something that is not in its original state. So it's very close to a pharmaceutical, but it's not a pharmaceutical. It's a nutraceutical, but that's why it's called nutraceutical. So dimethylglycine is a nutraceutical. Like there, there are there are things in some of our products that are nutraceutically based. And the reason that I do that is because in order to achieve what I want to achieve in the time period that I achieve it in with my formulas, I have to make the probably some of the my most diverse formulas on the market. So when you look at what we're doing and what we're trying to, I can't use the word cure, but what we're trying to, what, what diseases that we are trying to alleviate or what diseases that we are trying to, to allow the body to, allow the body to heal. There are lots of times, and I would have to, I would have to say like with leaky gut, Let's just use leaky gut as an example. You're, you, because there's like the cellular turnover and the cellular mechanism of an animal is, is so much faster than a person, like seven years. By the time you're looking at a dog that has skin disease, arthritis, laryngeal paralysis, or you know, sensitive guts or some kind of allergies, if they're three years old, it's like that body has had that disease for a really long time. So if you don't want to wait another three years for that animal to get better, or you don't want to wait another five years for that animal to get better, because that's a long time. It's not that long for a person, but it's a long time for an animal. Then you want to make sure that you're, you know what you're doing, that you just haven't jumped on the bandwagon of okay, now I'm going to produce products, right? Because that's not what Adored Beast is about. Adored Beast is about using products that we've clinically proven over decades. And these products are, are, are made with every single thing in it to work together as a synergistic formulation to do something. So that's a long explanation to say that, that when I started sourcing stuff, I realized that a lot of the stuff that I thought never left Canada, never left, never left um, the United States, or was for sure honestly growing in the, grown in North America, so it's country of origins North America, it's sent to China to be processed. And the, the reason that happens is because to have it processed in Canada or processed in the United States, the product itself would, would, it would increase the cost of the product that it would be so much more expensive, like way, way, way more expensive. So that's how, that's why they do it. Another reason is, is because China is a very smart country from a perspective of industry and a perspective of being on the edge of, of what, where industry is going. And um, they are so much, even from a probiotic perspective, I did a, I did a course on, on um, postbiotics that are just starting to just, people are just starting to talk about it right now. China was talking about it six years ago. So they're, they've come in and they've bought a lot of the companies that are here in, in North America or even in the UK. And they are still North American or UK companies, but they're owned by, they're owned by people in China or industries in China. So they, they take it, they, 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 they take it from here, they process it there and come back. And what people have to understand is that 
that's a lot of the times when something bad has happened in the processing part of it, right? So when, when, if someone's not looking at a certificate of analysis and actually taking the time, which took me forever to find out and looking at the hands that touch that ingredient all the way through, mm -hmm. there's a lot of times that people truly, they're not doing it to, to be untruthful, but they truly believe that, 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 they're, that China has nothing to do with it. And I think a lot of people would be really surprised if they took the time and energy that Adored Beast has to really track exactly where that ingredient has been grown, where it's been processed, where it's been packaged. Like it, 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 it's, it's, I could do an entire two hours of education on, on sourcing ingredients. Wow. The next thing is that because of the melamine scare with China, right. China has had to pull up their socks incredibly as far as their, their processing and their integrity around stuff. Some of them are still horrific. And, in, and without seeming off-putting, there's a lot of things that happen that I don't support there, right? That, that, that is one of the reasons why, from an animal perspective, from an animal welfare perspective, that I, I don't want to support. And we are doing all kinds of different things with the Dord Beast, but what I have done is the companies that, I, that, I, that have gone, oh yes, it's, it's grown in Iowa. Perfect example, it's grown in Iowa, country of origin, Iowa. Well, the country of origin is Iowa, but it's processed in China. So when I found that out, then I went one step farther to see, to, to, to dig in to the processing company that it's coming from. Cause I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it where it wasn't processed in China. Yeah. So I either had to decide I'm not putting this ingredient in because I can't get it in North America or I am going to get it from China, but I'm going to make sure that where I get it from China, that I can see their status of their, of their, of the company, right? Which, yeah. which you actually can, you can, you can actually find out, um, their, their, their level of where they've been, where they are in the government now. And if they have come into this really higher, much, much, much higher. There's, there's, there's companies in China now that their processing is phenomenally at a higher standard than, than a lot of manufacturing companies in the U S. So this is a big topic. And I, and I think that what happens, which makes me really sad is that it again, it, it doesn't really become about sourcing and what's best for the animals. It, it, come, it, be, it becomes about competition. And I'm not about to engage in that even remotely because I never have. It's, it's just not part of what Adored Beast is about. So what, I mean, we're going we're gonna to be starting to do a lot of new things that we've been, that's been in the work for about 18 months now. And one thing I can tell you is if I tell you something about Adored Beast, I could have, I could have said everything that we buy is country of origin, is, 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 is not China. But I don't say that. But I actually could say that based on their certificate of analysis. So I don't say that. I'm completely transparent. I'm, I, I really pride myself on that. And I know that there are like, you know, people can say a lot of things and, and, and things that have been said are, are one person's or a couple people's perspective and what their knowledge, where their knowledge is around that. And 
it's not bad, it's not good, it's not right, it's not wrong. And the reason I can say that is because I don't, for me, I don't care. I know that I take this product. I'm about, I, I, I'm a, I eat probably as clean as any, like, I drive everybody crazy. Like I'm getting my house, I have my house contractor wanting to jump off a cliff because I won't let anything in my house that's not green, that I haven't sort made sure that the company is environmentally, um, has integrity environmentally. There's not one single thing in our product that I wouldn't take, that I don't take. I mean, I take Gutsu's every single morning. I take liver tonic every single morning. I take phytoplankton every single morning. That's funny, so do I. <laughs> and I, I love my animals like my children. Like I love my customers' animals like my kids. I would not put a product on the market if I didn't believe that it was the best thing for someone to take or something to take. And it, it, and it's almost like, I don't, I still don't, when Adored Beast started, no one was doing what Adored Beast is doing. Nobody, we had no competition. People didn't even know what leaky gut syndrome was. Right. And we're always on the leading edge. We're always like, we have the first canine probiotic in the world. Yes, you do. Nobody even... Why? Because I did, that's why my roof's leaking. Because I, it was more important to me to raise the bar when it comes to probiotics, because I know how important it is, right? Than it was to fix my roof. I, I, I needed to find a way. It didn't make sense for me that we're just using human probiotics for animals, right? So, so I have, I have nothing to hide when it comes to the integrity of this company, I have nothing to hide about my sourcing ingredients. I have nothing but like, you know, this pro these products have, have been in thousands and thousands and thousands of animals. And when you look at how it's helping them, and don't forget, to, two decades, right? 20 years of using, 26 years now because of, of Adored Beast. If we were using something that wasn't helping cellular mechanism, that wasn't helping autoimmune disease, that wasn't helping um, maintain longevity, we would be seeing, I would have been seeing in my practice animals dying early. You see results in animals far faster than you see them in people right so if we were using anything that that wasn't the 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 best that wasn't the best quality we would know that we would know that by the amount of people that that this product's touched and more amount of animals that it's touched so I'm not, I'm not negating what people are saying. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even focused on, I mean, it's my team that's telling me stuff that's going on. I, I, I refuse to even look at it or engage in it because I know, I know what my products are. I know what my ingredients are. I spend a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of um, my heart into making sure that every single one of those ingredients and that's the other thing i when you go out and you get manufacturers even if they're organic those th some of those companies are massive i mean massive like i wasn't even able to speak to to i couldn't even t you know you send your formula and it gets done it's like can you send me a certificate of analysis okay yeah i can but it's coming from the biggest company that like you can't even talk to somebody that could say, oh yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on, Julie. Let me go into this and actually navigate this to see if I can actually answer your questions. They yep. couldn't even answer my questions. Even organic certified 
manufacturers could not follow the full process because you know what? There are loopholes in everything. I have veterinarian friends that, that are vets for organic farmers and what gets passed through from that perspective, it's, it's, it's sad. It, it, it's heartbreaking actually. Yeah. So when I, I chose to work with the person that I worked with, I chose a compounding company rather than a manufacturing company so that I could go in and I could literally look at their books. I could literally track it myself. She was so transparent. She's like, sit down. Here's all my information. Find it, right? Come find it. I had, I've had, you know, the raw struck team come in and, and film right in where, what, what I do with everything, like where I get everything. Like it, I'm not, um, I have no concerns and does, so to answer your questions, our ingredients are sourced all over the world. And some of the ingredients, the country of origin is usually here somewhere, but it would, but they get processed in China. And, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that it isn't because it is. Then it would be safe to say that other supplement companies go through the same process. A lot of supplement companies don't go through that process. No, but I mean, they're, they're, that wouldn't be fair to say. <laughs> their ingredients are sourced. I mean, they, they will go through China at some point. Oh yeah. And, and what I think isn't fair is I would never say, oh, that person there, they're, that product or that ingredient, for sure that has to come from China. Because mm -hmm. when they look at their certificate of analysis, they're being honest. They're looking at the country of origin and it doesn't say China. It says something else, right? right? But that doesn't mean that it doesn't go there to get processed and come back. Right. Because it, it doesn't have to say that on the certificate of analysis. Well, that's so that's, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, but it doesn't mean, I'm not saying that it means that, 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 you know, I, it, I can only speak about my own products. That's all I can. I can't speak about anyone else's products because I'm not that person. I'm not that company. I can only, I stay on my path. I keep my blinkers on. I, I know my products and my com company intimately. And, you know, that's all I can say. And I, and I, and I feel I would never go out and say, oh, well, you know what, that ingredient, there's no way that doesn't come from China because, because right. that's not my business. I stay out of anybody else's business. I stay in my business and in my business, that's, that's what I know. And over 26 years, I know how it, not only do I know it, but I know how it reacts. And I feel like there are, there, when I started Adored Beast, there wasn't a lot of other companies. And now everybody and their brother are probiotic specialists and everybody and their brother, like, do you know that you can create a formula and you don't have to test it on one animal? Not one animal. Oh, wow. If I create, I could create a formula right now. I could do zero clinical testing. I could do zero on it. And I could put it into a formula and I can put it on the market with no, no research, no trials, no anything. That is, that's legal. And I would say the majority of companies out there, that's what it is. Understandably so. They have to show that every ingredient is, is it's called grass, which means it's generally recognized as safe. Okay. So long as the ingredients are generally recognized as safe and, and the milligrams per daily dose is within the correct milligrams, you can create, Donna, you can create a product. You could, you could go, 
I like this ingredient. I like that ingredient. I like that ingredient. I've heard that ingredient. I've read about this. I've read about that. I've researched this and I've read about that. I'm going to make this formula. You can make that formula and put it on the market tomorrow. Well, so, so where I stand as far as our, our formulas and our sourcing and our company is what I can say is we're one of the very few companies that can actually say that we have worked with it in a veterinary setting for 20 years. And that, sell, that says loads. I mean, you know, how our dogs respond to your products, how the client's dogs respond to your products speaks for itself. Yeah, and it speaks to research from an empirical point of view, right? Empirical research, you can't, you can't say that if you've used a product for 26 years or 15 years or 10 years or eight years on animals who have a much quicker lifespan and you're seeing almost like miracles with these products. How can you negate that on any way, in any way, shape or form? How can you, how, you can't. I don't care if it's the most organic, the most, whatever you want to even call it, you can't negate empirical proof for over thousands and thousands of animals in over decades. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I love it when new products come out. I, 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 you know, we have a big thing, competition, collaboration over competition. And what makes me the very saddest of all of this is that in 1994, when I started this, I was like a little tiny drop in the bucket. Yeah. People thought I was a witch that flew in on a broom. <laughs> I, I fought vet associations. I second mortgaged my house to do what I do. And I'm, I filled with, when people say about competition, I, I'm happy we have competition because what that means is that the, that the holistic view and the holistic mentality is growing. And to me, that says people are becoming more aware and more animals are going to get better. And there's going to be a shift in consciousness in the world. But we are still a very small holistic medicine, holistic supplements. We're a small piece of the puzzle compared to pharmaceuticals and drugs, right. and processed food and whatever. We have to stick together. Absolutely. We, we are, we should not be pointing fingers, no. slagging people. Cause you know what? There is enough sick animals and there is enough sick people and there is enough sick, um, enough, enough beings to go around for everybody. And everybody can, every people are smart enough to, 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 research stuff themselves and make an informed decision. And that's been my basis of teaching forever. Teaching, writing is give people information, step back and know in your heart that they will make the right decision for them and for their pet. Cause what, what that person's decision for their family and for their, 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 um, for their philosophy might not be what your decision is, might not be what my decision is, but it will be the right decision because it's their animal, mm -hmm. their life, their budget, their, it will be the right decision. Yeah. And if we as a group of people don't stay together as a group of holistic, like-minded, animal loving, planet loving people, if we fight with each other, it's only gonna be detrimental to moving this movement forward. So I can look at a product and I can think, oh, okay, well, I wouldn't do that. But I would not ever once say 
that's a bad product. Because you know what? If it's in a price range where someone can afford, where they might not be able to afford a Dord Beast, and that person buys that product over a Dord Beast, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. At least because they're trying. It's one step closer to what my goal is before I die, which is to make a shift in the world of how we treat animals from an ethical point of view. Mm -hmm. Right? Ethics to me, from a veterinary, like, and what ethics to me means is how they're treated, how, how the, the, how the, you know, you know, I think everybody knows what I'm saying, yeah. right? It's, 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 it's a, it's for me, it's a much bigger picture. And the bigger picture is, is like I said, collaboration over competition and, and creating a much larger, um, movement in the world and if that means that my competition is is less expensive but still is is in using more stuff from china or moving i don't care right. because we're saying the same thing we're saying hey take a look at this hey try this hey there's a different way hey you know like you don't have to do this you don't have to do these drugs we need to stay together and stick together yeah. and support each other because yeah. it's it's important absolutely so does yeah, that, think... that, that that's a long big <laughs> thing did that answer your question yes and then some thank you so very much julie i so appreciate everything that you've been doing and you just help to drive all of us to be you know to do better well, I don't think I drive you. I think our, our animals are driving well, us. But you're giving us the tools. I'm trying to, to give you the tools. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah, I, I am. And it, but then so are a lot of other companies. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not the only company in the world, the only person in the world that's doing this. Everybody's doing this. Like, everybody's doing their best, mm -hmm. right? And I think what's so cool about us that – when I say cool, I mean, why I love my company, why I love my business partner, why I love my customers, why I love my Adored Beast team, is that, that we are always evolving. And if I said right now, I am doing the best that I can, I'm always open for doing better. Always open for doing better. And I'm always looking at different ways to be more sustainable and different ways to be more um um like i i i i never ever ever go these are our formulas this is what it's always going to be it's the formula but those formulas have have also um grown right and matured mm -hmm. it's the same ingredients but they're they're there, we're always we're always looking for better ways of doing things, from a carbon footprint point of view, from a from a from everything. Like, you know, I, I my the the compounding company that that work that I work with, they do things by hand. Cool. There's there they do they have staff doing they have all of these people from from nothing warms my heart more i go in there and you hardly see any machines there's people with like blow dryers like hair blow dryers putting the the seal wraps over things there's people hand mixing stuff in mixers there's it's like the the and you walk in and they're, and they're from from everywhere from like Hungary or Mexico or or North or Nova Scotia or the United States and I'll walk in and the energy of those people and and how much they appreciate their job and how much they love what they do and 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 I go in and they ask me all these questions and and they love working there it's like I'm an energy medicine practitioner. Mm -hmm. Having some massive machine 
organic or not, creating medicine, okay? Like holistic, natural medicine. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's great that it can happen. But you go into something where somebody is doing it by hand, especially at the numbers that we're doing, by hand, and the energy of love and attention, and, and it's mind-blowing. So are we perfect? And um, am I doing everything the way I wanted to do? No, that's never going to happen. I'll be dead and I still won't be doing everything exactly the way I wanted, probably want to be doing. And I'm going to be learning all the time. But when I, when I, when I have a chance, a choice of going, can I give all of these people a job because we're their biggest, we've turned into their biggest, um, uh, we do, we do more with them than anybody else does. Like there's no naturopathic doctors or any other company that's making as much as, as doing as much for them as we are. When you look at that and you look at the bigger picture on every level, that's what Adore Beast is about. Adore Beast is such a high level company mm-hmm. that I can't look at it just from that. It's like, who's got hands on my product? Who's, who's putting the stuff into that machine? Like, wh- like what, is it, what is it doing? Am, am I feeding the world? Am I making the world a better place? And it took me a year and a half to figure that out. When I had investors in this company going, hey, like we invested their money in this a year and a half ago, and you still can't find a place to make it because you don't, you're not comfortable with it. It's like, okay, pick up your freaking mind. And I'm like, I can't make up my mind because I haven't found the right fit for what I want to put out in the world. Right. When it it comes to a company and products, there's a lot more than sourcing ingredients. There's a lot more than ingredients. There's a lot more, at least it is for me. What everyone else is doing, I'm sure they're doing the best that they can do. And I, and I, support what they do and I want them to survive and thrive because then we all will. But from my perspective, there's a lot more than that. And, and honing in and just focusing on that is like then going, okay, we're just going to put in these probiotics because probiotics are this massive thing right now without looking at the higher level of what probiotics are, are what they are. Like we know nothing about the gut. It sounds like we know a lot. And I'm here to tell you, I've been researching gut bacteria for probably 29 years and we still know nothing about it. Like nothing. So it's, it's a making, making a product for me is not, sourcing something and putting in a bottle making a product for me is my is my life's work and i and i look at it very differently than than most companies that am i am i better because of i i do that no i'm just different it's just how i do it that's why we love you julie okay i'll shut up now that was that's, really long <laughs> that's why we love you thank you julie you're welcome thank you donna you're very welcome Bye, Donna. Uh, Next up, I've got Shelly. Just let me find your name here, Shelly, and the questions. Hey, okay, you should be able to talk now. Shelly, let me know. Thank you, Stephanie and Julie. Hey. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Um, So I wanted to find out best diet. I have a um, nearly four-year-old golden doodle. She's um, standard-sized golden doodle. Um, and a friend of mine has been working with you and it really helped her dog. You got her on a special diet and, you know, Lizzie doesn't have any health problems now. Um, but I, I just, I want to give her the best diet. I want her to have the best life. And then I have a second question for my cat who is 20. Um, and she's doing fabulous except that she has kidney disease. And so she's been having fluids twice a week and she told the animal communicator, like, you know, I just don't like my space being invaded. And so I need to 
look at some any wondered if you had any other kind of options for getting fluids for like a cat oh she's getting sick of getting her she's getting sick of getting take yeah of getting yeah so anyway those are my two questions well um diet the best diet i put i put her on a diet where the did dog, i write? The, the dog wait, the dog or the cat yeah, the dog. yeah the dog. What, what would be the best the best diet she's taking she's have a um, science diet and royal canaan and i haven't been giving her any of the i'm sorry no 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 um i she has id and then um gastrointestinal from royal canaan but i haven't been giving her any of the science diet kibble lately and she's been asking me for it just because after talking to my friend i understand that that's probably not really good for her so um i would just like to get her on a healthy diet so she doesn't develop any illnesses well does she if she's on a gastro diet is does she have ibd or something no she does not so why is she on gastro i i don't know it's not never been diagnosed never been told to us that she has ibd but that's but but does she have like like soft stool or does she vomit a lot no, no. and your vet put her on gastro yeah i guess yeah she must have she must have like i don't know because of you know obviously there there has to be a reason why she went on a gastro diet there has to be like i mean the vet wouldn't just put a dog on gastro because it's a it's a prescription food right yeah she had three different foods and, he, and she just alternates them so she would get the gastro like once every three days hmm. that's that's bizarre um maybe well, first, every two days yeah yeah and then what other one gastro and what else and then id turkey and chicken yeah something your vet's feeling like there's something wrong with your dog because okay. she wouldn't all those prescription foods that she, you're, you're you're talking about are all for animals that are those aren't maintenance sort of like normal life stage foods those okay. are foods those are foods that are prescribed for an animal that has a problem with their gi so i don't how old is she she's gonna be four and what is she she's a golden doodle golden doodle and she's never had diarrhea i'm sure she's i mean not in general she's maybe had it once or twice but it's not an issue for her okay so one i would go and i would ask your vet why she's on those foods okay like i would you need to ask your vet because I, I I honestly I honestly don't feel like a vet would have an animal on those foods if there wasn't a reason why she needed to have a prescription diet food. Okay. They would I would imagine they would have her on even if they did a even if they did um, you know a, a vet exclusive food. Why they would put her on that I don't I don't know because those are those foods are for dogs that have gastrointestinal issues the, the, the science diet as well or just the gastro gastro and the the um the, the turkey and the chicken science diet are also for well didn't you say they were that was i i id or which one is it id yeah, yeah. that is okay yeah so i would ask why she's, okay. she's on that then what i would do where do you live santa barbara okay. california then, then i would contact answers pet food answers pet food yeah and talk to billy hokeman there and he's incredible like he's a he's a really really he'll be able to once you like from a food perspective once you um find out why then you'll be able to tell billy why she's on that food and then he'll be able to direct you exactly how to get her on a raw food diet right or a real a real food diet compared to any kind of processed food okay because that's that i mean ultimately that's everybody's goal is to is to get them on um if you can get them on a on a on a real food diet and not on a not on a processed diet so for many 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 reasons but how do, how do i contact him how, how do i um stephanie i'll put it in the chat for you okay great thank you and then and then from a from a perspective of supplements to keep to help with longevity and stuff 
Yeah. Um, you know, uh, really good probiotics are, are to me diets and not supplements. So I feel like your dog should probably have a daily maintenance of a really good pre and probiotic. Um, and then probably a product that has really high antioxidants, right? So that it's fighting free radicals and it can, it can get proper cellular, cellular health and cellular, um, turnover, which is things that those things are what helps to prevent things like cancer and things like that. And do you have those products or I would get them? Yeah. From yeah. I mean, I would, I would use Phytos Flora, which is our, which is our pre, which is one, our canine species pre and probiotic. Uh-huh. And then I would use Phyto Synergy, which is phytoplankton. And um, phytoplankton is, has probably the highest count of something called superoxide dismutase, SO, SOD, SOD. And, and that is, um, that's an antioxidant to help with uh, cellular regeneration, making sure that the cell death is happening because it's important for cell death to happen because that's what causes that that can cause cancer okay um auto for autoimmune diseases all that stuff those would be okay. the, the two two maintenance things just to try and keep her healthy that yep. would that would be something that i would would recommend so those would be the pre and the pre uh the probiotics and the prebiotics are the two things yeah. you just tell me no the the pre and probiotics are in the phytos phytos flora uh -huh. and then phytosynergy is a um is a, a whole food nutrition that has superoxide dismutase in it okay. which is an antioxidant okay great and, and as far sorry no go on sorry. and as far as your cat goes yeah. um but with your dog you really really have to ask your vet okay well because there, there has to be a reason that he has him on that um but as but far if, as she, if she does if if she does have some IBS, then if she does, Billy will be able to help you. You'll be able to help me. Okay, great. For sure. Um, and then as far as um, your kitty goes, does she get really really upset? Like, does she growl? And do you have to really restrain her and stuff? Or how is she? she she's been really good about it. But she and so I, I take her to the vet hospital one day a week, and then my friend is the vet tech, and so she's been having us come to her house and she's very zen it's real calm but minute throws up a little bit after we go to her house so that's why i talked to the animal communicator yeah, and yeah. and so she um you know about why are you throwing up and then she, at one point she said i didn't realize this was a long-term thing and then she started hiding under the bed okay yeah yeah I know, so they, so I want to honor you know I mean I want her to be but I also want to honor that so I'm looking for other options is she help. eating yes she's eating okay so you know what sometimes and I agree with you because I I really do that too I really honor what they say but I also feel like sometimes I do that too much I I there's a fine line of going I'm gonna force you to stay alive <laughs> whether you like it or not i'm gonna i'm gonna control that piece there's th that or going this is really helping you and this is going to allow you to live a live a longer better quality of life and i think that maybe what i would do before i would stop it or look for an alternative is because there really isn't an alternative to sub-Q fluids okay. um, is I would look at giving her something prior to that so giving her um, like aconite a remedy called aconite and it's a homeopathic remedy or aconite we have you're in the unit we don't have go-to in the US right okay so if you go and you buy something like um, um, aconite and arnica homeopathic remedies which is which is like a 200 c and give that to her maybe you know at at least a couple of hours prior to um giving her the fluids it may help to reduce her stress and feeling that she's being invaded okay so you might be able to shift that 
The other thing you can do is use flower essences on her because cats respond really well to that. Yeah. And, and the guru for cat, cat um, uh, flower essences is Stephanie. What's her name? The vet that we had on. Dr. Jean Hovey. Hovey. She, Jean Hovey is, um, if you want to go on our YouTube station, and we did a thing called um, uh, Stronger Together, which was a big, big all-day conference. And it's broken into sections of, of, from the whole day. And look for Jean Hobie, and she specializes in cats. She's, she's incredible. She's like the cat whisperer. How and, do you spell her name? It's H-O-B-E-Y? Yeah, and Steph's going to put it in the chat Thanks. again. And um, if you contact, go onto her website and contact her, okay. she'll, she'll be able to really help navigate you through that. Like really, really help um, with flower essences and stuff like that. Plus she's a cat vet and she's all about cats are different. Cats show their stress different cats. Like she's just incredible. She just, I just love her That's to great. death. And, um, so, so do that, but is your, is your cat eating dry food or canned food? Canned food. Canned? Okay, good. A little bit of dry food, but mostly canned food. And I've just started adding some moisture to it. And I'm just, and I give her the squirters of water, but yep. the vet said she needed more than that. Yeah, she just needed more. So, so the other thing that Billy, you can talk to Billy about this too, but Billy's done a lot of work with cats and kidney failure drinking raw, raw goat's milk and how it can it can help to rehydrate them at really, really a lot. Raw goat's milk. Okay. Yeah. So ask him about that when you're talking to him about your dog. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Funny. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Sandy, are you ready to roll? Let's see. Let me find you here. Patience. Oh, what? Sandy, you were just here. Am I blind, you guys? Sandy, Sandy, Sandy. She's getting ready. Oh, there she is. What the heck? Why can't I see you in the attendees? Bear with me, guys. Sorry. That's oh, there you go. Hey. Sorry about that. Sandy. <laughs> Are you able to talk? Hey. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, that, picture, that picture is so funny. Am I on the screen? No, you're not on the screen, but somebody with a red dress and... Oh, yeah, um, that's me. <laughs> so pretty and so cute. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, just standing in my kitchen taking pictures of myself. But <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my question is kind of um, similar to Shelly. So I have an 11 year old female Havanese and she got pancreatitis in July and I had an ultrasound done and then it also showed um, inflammatory bowel disease in her upper intestines I guess. Um, so anyway she's also on the oh and the other thing is she's had elevated ALP liver enzymes for about three years and so for three years now, I've been giving her liver tonic and um, blood bugs. Okay. So she's been on those for three years. Um, so since she had her um, pancreatitis and inflammatory bowel disease in July, she's been eating Hill's ID low fat. Um, but I kind of have a sneaky suspicion that maybe she has an issue with the turkey and I should be on a more novel protein. So I was kind of hoping to transition her to a low-fat sardine and millet-based kibble, and I thought it would soak it really well upon feeding. But it's, it's a good kibble. I know that kibble's not the best, but it is a, a high-quality kibble, and it has no synthetic vitamins in it. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was good. Um, so anyway, she's been on um, what I told you, and I just recently purchased Phytos Flora, your go-to jumper joints, and gut peel. I tried her on your healthy gut and she didn't do well. It made her have more diarrhea, more gulping, more indigestion. Yeah. So, yeah. and then I tried her actually again on a um, totally um, hypoallergenic um, digestive enzyme, same thing. So I don't think she can take digestive enzymes. So, so sorry, go ahead. 
oh, I was interested in doing the leaky gut protocol. Um, I did also purchase that gut seal. So I'm wondering, like, can I use the gut soothe, the liver tonic, and, and the gut seal with love bugs if needed and do, do the protocol that way, the leaky gut protocol that way without the digestive enzymes essentially is what I'm trying to get rid of. But you got gut seal on its own? Yeah. Where do, where do you live? In, I live in Edmonton and I got it in Spruce Grove. And you got it where, sorry? Um, they changed their name. They were, I think, Bone and Biscuit, but I don't know what they are now. Um, yeah, it, yeah, they had that there. So okay. is that bad to, to use the gut seal without the digestive enzymes? Is it gonna still be effective? Did you use the Antivax? No, I haven't. I haven't started anything. The only thing so far has been the, the liver tonic and the love bugs and everything else I purchased, but I haven't started because I don't really know how. Okay. So, so, and she's how old? Uh, she's 11. And, and she's, she... had, she's had um, like soft stool since July. Okay. What is she again? Having knees. Having knees. Yeah. So when you said that she's got inf inflammation in her small intestine or upper intestine, is that what you're saying? Yeah, the upper intestine. Yeah. Have they mentioned anything to you called SIBO? No, they didn't. Um, okay. The vet has had her on antibiotics. I don't know if that makes. Yeah, so that's what I want to ask you. Does the when she's on antibiotics, does it help her, her help her diarrhea? Not really. Like, um, she's only had diarrhea really once, but it's been just very so soft stool. Um, so no, it didn't. She had us on the metronidazole, which I'm now finding out is so horrible, but that's what she was on. It made no difference. And so I think we've agreed that we're not going to bother trying her on that again because there's no point. It doesn't work for her. Okay. But what, so why is she, at, why is she on antibiotics? Oh, she was on, uh, she was trying her on metronidazole to see if she could firm up the stool. And she's been on omeprazole to try and control the acid, I guess. Um, and also on serenia for nausea. Um, so, but these things are really not working. And so that's why I'm, I'm trying to do your protocol instead. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I don't know, but I would, I would, um, I'm going to get Stephanie to give you some names of like maybe um, Katie Kangas, Dr. Kangas. Uh, I have to tell you what I would do. Okay. <laughs> I would be um, reaching out to a holistic veterinarian and doing oh. a consult and, uh and, and hoping that the, your, your holistic vet and your, regular vet can interface okay because okay. what you're saying to me there there's something called SIBO which mm -hmm. is which is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth okay. and um it can present a lot like that it can also be a contributor to pancreatitis chronic pancreatitis okay. um she's a small breed dog right yeah and 11 sorry i'm paying more attention to her 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 pathology than i did yeah she's 11 years old and 14 so, months. so you know what like like that's not old for that breed right she no can, and she's super, super playful still like she's happy right so she's i happy. would be i would be if i were you i would be um really 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 um someone said steve marsden's clinic in edmonton um, i know that clinic but i know like what they tend to do there at that clinic is um everybody goes on to the hillary's blend and does the hillary's blend with um like a home cooked diet that's typically yeah. what's um my aunt and my friend have both gone and that's what was done for them yeah um so is is that a good product i mean i think it's all synthetic vitamins too right would it, it is. still be yeah. yeah so and i know that's what they do and honestly like i can still order the product myself and do it myself and follow the recipes because they're already online right but well i don't i don't i don't 
what I, this is what I think. I okay, think, so sorry. I, I think that you need to work with a vet and put your dog on a home cooked diet. Okay. First, you don't think that kibble is a good idea soaked. I don't. Well, you can soak it with bone broth, but then you're going to have to be really careful of the fat. Like that would I, that's what I would yeah. say is like to go on bone broth. But yeah. I would work with Katie Kangas or something and start her on a start with along with your vet. Start her on a because you know pancreatitis. If you don't aren't careful with it, it can it can go into diabetes. It can go into all kinds. Yeah. Of things, yeah. Right? So especially small breeds. So I would I would be I would be really super focused on getting a, a, a home cooked diet okay. through both your vets working together so that you can keep going in and getting blood work done, right? Okay. Um, and that everybody's on the same page and know who, who's doing what. And okay. the best way to do that is to say to your vet, you know, I know this holistic vet in you know, at the, like Steve's, Steve's clinic, mm -hmm. if you, but I would rather stay with you because she, you know, you're her vet and mm -hmm. we feel comfortable with you and, and, and get a consult from a holistic vet, like a phone consult or a Zoom, a Zoom consult. Okay. And then the two of you work together because I adore that because normally what happens then is you work with someone incredible like Dr. Kangas, mm -hmm. and then Dr. Kangas can interface with your vet, and then your vet learns, and she doesn't get her nose, or they don't get their nose out of joint because they're vet to vet, right? Mm -hmm. And and there's like kind of no competition because you're still going with your other vet, you know? Like it's it's just a really 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 nice way of having a relationship doing something like that. Okay. Yeah. As far as, as far as, um, what you could give her, I would, I would be giving, did you say you had phytosynergy? I don't have phytosynergy. I was going to ask about that. Like, do you have to be concerned about the fat in it? And phytosynergy? Yeah. No. Okay. No, not at all. Um, but what I would do is I would try her on, I would put her on, um, alternating days i would like even now i would put her on a half dose of gut soup okay then the next day a half dose of um phytos uh phytos flora okay which i have yeah okay. so i would alternate those and then i would i would um you can go ahead and use gut seal it's not it's probably it's not gonna hurt but oh. I would, I, before I would use gut seal, what I would do is I would use phytosynergy and because you're in Canada, I would use go to. So if you go back to your, if you go back to your, um, do, do you know if they have go, go to there? I have, I have your go to. Okay. I bought so, it. So don't, so, so do go to twice a day. Okay. Do do alternating gut soothe and phytos or up half dose after a week go to a normal dose if everything's okay. okay and then use phytosynergy once a day to start and i would ramp after a week or right away no after a week okay and then i'd start on once a day and then i would even i would seriously think it of doing it up to three times a day if she can if she can tolerate it Okay. And then go to phytos, phyto, and then once she's on everything, then then I would actually do phytos flora and gut soothe. Okay. At both together. And, and at that point, do I add in the gut seal then? Um, you at that point, I would contact Kaylin and, and let and let Kaylin know how she's doing, and then I can I can tell you what what I would do after that because one of the big things with pancreatitis is you want to get rid of the pain. Yeah. And she, like, she's pretty good. I mean, she's so playful. So I think when she's in pain, um, like she does the panting, um, which, which when she's done that, I give her, um, about two drops of CBD oil in her gum. Yep. And then that seems to work really quickly for her. 
Yeah. And it's like almost instant. But I, but I did go and get your go-to because I heard the lady last week say that that would, you told her to, to use that if she's yeah. having pancreatitis flare up. Yeah. So that's why I went and got your go-to. So would you say I should use the go-to instead of the CBD or continue? With the oh, no, she can still have CBD when she's in. Okay. When she's it's full spectrum in organic. Yeah, when she's in distress, she can still, I mean, that's fine. But I would, I would, um, when it comes, and like, I can't give advice on CBD because we don't have CBD. No, nope, fair enough. Yeah. But, no but um, I would start off with giving her go to twice a day just for maybe oh, yeah. three or four days. And then I would go to it and then I would do it once a day because Arnica is, will be so helpful for the, what happens with their reflux. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. with, with the pain and because what, what can start to happen is that reflux can make the, um, the mucosal lining of the larynx yeah. And, and, and esophagus really inflamed and then it can start yeah. to scar. Okay. So what happens with gutsu, this is the anacetyl glucose, this is that whole thing about sourcing and nutraceuticals. Yeah. Um, anacetyl glucosinine is a uh, natural anti-inflammatory for smooth muscle. Okay. So it also helps mucosal line, it helps any kind of lining. So it'll help to decrease inflammation in her GI and her, in her small intestine, in her esophagus, in her throat, in her larynx, like all, all of that. And it'll also help. Um, um, and then the, the go-to will help with um, the pain, the pain and inflammation. Okay. I also so, picked up jump for joints because I noticed her shoulder is clicking all the time. Should I just hold off on that for now or? Because yeah. Arnica already in the go-to, right? Yeah. So I would hold off on, I would just do those three things. Three oh, things? Okay. Yeah, three things. And then let Kayla know how how she is. And then you're going to put Katie Kenningas' in the chat? Yep, absolutely. I okay. did put it there and I will repost okay. it right now. And I would get a hold of her and try to get her on a real food diet. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Julie. Okay. I will do that. Thank you so much for all of your help. I, I hope it was um, helpful for other people too, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Well, that's Thank great. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Robin, I think we have time for two more quickies. Robin, holy heck, I don't know the alphabet today, Julie. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Robin, can you hear us? Oh, um, look, I think I froze. Uh-oh, shoot. Yeah, you did. We can hear you, though. Can you hear me? Look at my, look how I froze. At least I'm oh, smiling. At least I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Can, hey, can you Robin. Hi? Yeah, I'm here. I'm going to stop my video for a minute and then see if it unfreezes. Because you can hear me, right? Yep. Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Hi, Julie. Thank you so much for doing this. Hi, no us. worries. Let me see if it helped. There we go. There you go. Okay, cat question. I have a 13-year-old cat who has been raw fed from mother's milk, a completely balanced raw fed diet. And um, the last three or four months, he's been having intermittent soft, smelly stools, and then he's a normal stool, and then it's a soft stool, or it's a normal stool, and the end is soft. And um, I have um, Healthy Gut and Gut Soothe, and I know it's a Gut Soothe for dogs, because I'm in the US, and I know you give half the amount for that. And I tried that, and it, it didn't help, and then I, I tried both um, together, and I tried them separately, and it didn't help. And I just started giving him S. Um, mm -hmm. with just a plain organic chicken. I use a, a meat completer called Easy Complete. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Okay. And um, it's not going away and it's actually getting more. Worse, eh? Yeah. How old is he? He's 13 and he's been healthy his whole life. No vaccines. Him mm -hmm. and his brother, mm -hmm. who he loves. We don't have guts, feeling gut soothe in the States? Not yet. No? I don't think so. Is Not that yet, but it's very close. How close? 
Oh gosh, Julie, you're putting me on the spot here. Tomorrow? <laughs> no. Tomorrow. It ain't gonna be tomorrow. I can I can promise you that. We're close. Um sometimes we do I was just gonna say, can't we just mail it? Between friends. Email us. We just email email the 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 company. Okay. I I'll mean because, email. because the aloe, right? The aloe's not helping him. Well, one, the aloe's not helping him, and two, he really needs the recommended dose of MSL glucosamine, and he's not okay. getting it, right? So he, he wouldn't be getting the recommended dose of slippery elm, the recommended dose of, of the um, DGL or L-glutamine or, or MSL glucosamine. He's not getting the therapeutic dose because mm -hmm. you're doing half, to, half a dose. Right. right. So I would, I would definitely try and try and do that. The other thing is, um, it is his breath smell weird or anything. Is he drinking? No, nope. I, I brush his teeth oh. so I can tell it's, he's got good breath. He's happy. He's playful. He's acting normally. Okay. Um, I would do that. I would try and get the gut soothe. I would also try, um, I mean, sometimes gut is like, like soft stool can be, you know, maybe he needs some liver tonic. Maybe he needs some liver support because it'll also help his pancreas and his kidneys. Okay. I, right? I, I'll get that too. Um, I would do that and I would do phytosynergy because it's incredible for the gut. Like okay. it's, it's so, it's so good for the gut. I would do that. And then the other thing that I would think of maybe doing it's is it smelly did you say yes very smelly you could smell it upstairs <laughs> yeah. and 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 does it is he like oh my gosh i gotta go and i gotta go like right now does he mm, do no but when once he goes he is so upset that it's so off that he rubs his butt across the floor mm. and then he's upset mm -hmm. well you can also phone phone you can also contact my friend Andrea Ring, who's a who's an animal homeopath. I know I'm not supposed to say it because she's book solid. <laughs> um, not gonna be a uh, friend anymore. <laughs> and you know, or or um, uh, Sarah. Sarah's taking Sarah's taking cases. Okay. Um, I think Sarah's Sarah, on the call. And yeah, Sarah Griffith would be really good to to contact. And we can put hi her Sarah. <laughs> um, we can put her name in because. I mean, remedies like arsenicum and phosphorus or sulfur, like he might just need a little tweak, homeopathic remedy tweak. And okay. the cool thing about homeopathy is that, that you can kind of catch things really early and, mm -hmm. and trail them, even if they're, even if they're going into something yeah. nasty. Yeah. Okay, and and the uh, gut soothe that I'm going to email you guys to get, and the liver tonic and the phytosynergy. How do I how do I use all three of them? So liver tonic and phytosynergy just follow the direct. Start them off right away with um um uh the regular amount of liver tonic. I would start them off with half a dose of of um phytosynergy. And then after a week, work them up to the normal dose. You just put everything in his food. Mm -hmm. And um, the guts do the same thing. You just, I would start him off with half a dose, get him used to it, and then work him up to a full dose of, of, of the guts tooth. Okay, how long half a dose with the guts tooth? Just a week. A week. Yeah. He's got a great appetite, so he'll eat everything. Okay, good. Okay. Good. One other thing. And, and really get a remedy into him because I'm, I'm sensing he really needs a homeopathic remedy. Okay, and, um, you. and you're, you're recommending uh, for me to see Sarah? Sarah Griffith, yeah. Is she in the United States or it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter, she's in Canada. Okay, all right, great. Thank you so much. I, I'll email to, to get that gut suit. Thank you for everything okay. you do, we love you. Oh, thank you. Love you. I love your picture. That, Thanks, Robin. That's what's her name? Lily Tomlin. Lily Tomlin. Oh my God, I just love her. <laughs> you have to be a certain age to know. Oh my God, I love. Well, she's on Grace and Frankie. Oh, 
<laughs> really? It's right now on Netflix, and I just, I watch it because of her, because she's like, I, I love I her. I love her. I love her. Thanks so much. Okay, bye. Bye. Randy, are you still with us? Randy was on last week, but we didn't have a chance. There you are. Hey, all right, Randy, can, we can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Whew. Okay, so this is a long story. Uh-oh. <laughs> Deep breath. Are you crying? Yes. Oh. Hey, Randy, take okay. a deep breath. It's okay. Okay. You should have been Stephanie this morning with me. <laughs> right. You can hear me talk. I was crying so much. What's okay? It's okay. Like Stephanie said, just take a deep breath. Okay, so <clears throat> my girl has, uh, she's almost two, and uh, I've been fighting, like, with, all, with the, oh gosh, sorry. Well, I did, like, a, a the allergy diet to see what she was allergic to, and it comes to find out this was yeast to begin with, which is really hard to do an elimination diet on when you're messing with the yeast. So they threw her on Abiquil and um, uh, that shot, um, what's that called, Cytopoint, mm -hmm. and then I found the, the Abiquil group and started reading and reading and reading. And I've done raw diet for five years and so on and so forth. And so took her off everything and, and started uh, just working with the yeast. Found your stuff. Well, I'm giving her the yeasty beastie kit, but it's so bad that, like it was only in her ears and her toes, but then like you say, you're working in the gut. So it, it's coming out all over, like really bad. Like smell, um, she's in horrible pain. Um, cone like 24 seven, just so she doesn't rip her ears open and get hematomas and her face and just, just everything. And um, so I started the Yeasty Beast and I got your um, leaky gut uh, that I just started her on because I heard your two weeks on, two weeks off would maybe, you know, heal the gut and then fight the yeast as we kind of go along. So, and then I heard the podcast last week and on the Zoom chat, sorry. And I ordered the Phyto Synergy and the um, Phytos Flora. I have love bugs. I have uh, Colostrum from Four Leaf. I have had her on Corsiquin and Bovermine. So I need a little help. How old is she? She will be two years Christmas Day. Two years old? Uh, she'll be uh, on uh, this Christmas. She's only two? under two so she'll be two years old this christmas coming up and what is she a french bulldog oh and i have five and everybody else is fine yeah and she's like just the only one she i know but just you know when those guys when they do scratch their skin's so thin Ugh. you know right? and then her ears are constant. getting thick her okay. ears are getting to be like cauliflower if i don't keep the cone on her 24 okay. 7 and she's also now getting hot spots from the yeasty beast, uh, the hair is falling out in spots, they're turning red and just constant looking at the toes. If she's not itching her face, she's licking her feet. Okay, so, so, just tell me, tell me when you took, the, took her off the drugs. Um, she was on them for only two months and this was uh, about two months ago that I took her off of them. Okay, and when she was on the drugs, what happened? She cleared up perfectly. Um, with the Abiquil and then kind of sunk down lower at the end of about two months and then they gave her the shot and then I quit. And then you quit the Abiquil? <laughs> I quit everything, yeah. Well, the side of point had to wear off itself, but yeah, I quit everything and put her back on just elimination diet, which she was on like 90-10 beef and then they said at two weeks add turkey, but I said whatever. So she's been on just turkey, um, bone broth turkey I make myself with some cooked turkey, because I buy them frozen, no reason to throw the meat away, and then uh, raw turkey. And that's all she gets. And, and what, what um, how, how fast did you take her off of Apical? Uh The day, uh, just, just the one day I just chose to do it after reading up about it. Okay. So. Oh, and also we had uh, uh, found out last year um, when she was little, that we had mycoplasma, which is very hard to get. Uh, I guess somebody picked it up from Mexico and brought it back. And so she was highly um, 
dosed with antibiotics for that. But I also haven't given her any shots since she was her first year shots. <coughs> her puppy vaccinations. That, that was it. So, so you're in this thing where like, it's, it's just a sin that she's so young, right? Yeah. But yeah. then on the same hand, she's young. So hopefully she's vital enough to, 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 to get through this, right? I think she can. So I would stop, I would stop the yeasty beast. I did. Okay, good. Okay. Because I think what's, what's probably going to happen. So, so is she better or worse since she started the leaky gut? I just started it on the calendar. I have an old school calendar here. Started leaky. Where did that come in? July, September. Huh. I just started it uh, within the week. Okay. So you don't know whether she's better, same, worse? No, no. Because I sometimes I leave her, her cone off at night and then I wake up, there's like a puddle of blood on the, on the bathroom floor from her itching her ears. Okay. And what's her ears look like inside? Uh, scabby and um, very smelly of yeast. Her whole body reeks of it really bad. Um, I clean them out with the collet of silver and I have um, witch hazel organic and I have MCT oil that I rub in her ears because okay. they're just, you got to get the scabs off. And where do you live? Alaska. Alaska. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. So, so, so here's, here, this is like, first of all, what's happening is pretty common because, um, and, it's, and, I, and what I think is happening is because of her age. So first of all, do you remember when she, when, how old she, was she when she got started getting it? Seven months. Seven months. And when was her last vaccine? When oh. she was a puppy. Uh, she had the eight week puppies and then her one year, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, the, uh, her first vaccination was with rabies and I, that was it. So she had it at eight weeks and then what? And then her rabies along after that, like, like the 12 or 16 <coughs> or whatever. And then and that right. was it. She's never been vaccinated since then. Okay, my dog's gonna bark. Uh, Henry, hold on. Hey, can I just uh, can I just say a note about the old school calendar? Yeah, right here. I oh man, <laughs> I, I I live on it. It's for sure. I love it's, it. I I have two of them in the house actually, and then I save them for three years. I don't know why. But if you forget it or don't pack it, you're SOL. Not right? <laughs> oh, it's I don't have my planner with me. So true. <laughs> Julie, did we did we lose you or are you uh, SOL? Yeah, Pete, keeping it keeping it polite tonight. Julie's just <laughs> dealing or not dealing, but no, I'm I'm here. I just had to let Hannah out. <laughs> so, okay. so I think I think that. So that would have been what four months? Was he four months? She four months or six months when she had her rabies? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right about there. Okay. And then and then she was seven. How is she spayed? No. No, she's not spayed. Okay. And when did she have her first heat? Late. Uh, she was about twelve to thirteen months. Okay. Well. So I don't, I mean, I don't know what's going on, but, but what I have seen that's similar to this is that, um, first thing I would do is I would get a hold of Sarah Griffith again, and I would get Sarah, I'm sure she's listening. Come on, you can get in, come on. Oh, for goodness sakes. Hold on, my <laughs> dog. Henry. <laughs> Come on, hand me up. You're a silly goose. You silly goose. Um. Okay. So, so what I first thing that I would be thinking is um, a rabies vaccinosis that that could have triggered it because it can take well, it can take three months right before it really really manifests. So I would say I would say 
that I would be looking at trying to do a rabies, a rabies antivax with her. Um, what is that? It's just a homeopathic remedy that helps with the side effects from the, from the rabies vaccine. And sometimes the rabies, va the, if, if a dog reacts negatively or gets a vaccinosis from a rabies vaccine, it can last its whole lifetime if you don't actually eradicate that. Oh. So <laughs> I would look at doing that, first of all. And then the other thing that can happen is that seven-month and two-year-old dogs are, are really vital, right? They're, they've got a, they're very vital. They're young. So they get a disease and then you give her like Apoquil or you give her whatever, you're suppressing the disease, right? Yes, yes. So we understand that. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have taken her off, but what I see a lot is when you stop it, like if you just stop it cold turkey, yeah, it, it, it can literally like blow up because it's, it's like taking your thumb off of a hole that's in a water pipe. Yeah. So the apical is, is your thumb sticking in a, in a pipe and then you, and it's holding the disease down, 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 down. It's pushing it down. You take off the, your thumb and it just like shoots out. The water shoots out because it's, it's, it's being suppressed. So it, it has a rebound effect. And I've seen this more times than I can even possibly tell you is that when you don't wean them off, like really seriously wean them off, okay. it, it will come back with a vengeance. And then when it comes back with a vengeance, then the, their cortisol levels skyrocket. They, their, their skin. Yeah, she does, she does this like heavy breathing and like, <gasps> and gets like, has, I call them her panic attacks, her little fits. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I think, I think right now I would get, I would contact Sarah because Sarah can get, get you an anti-vaccinosis from, for rabies. And she can also, she's a nutritionist. She can also help you with, with her diet. And I would like, I just feel horrible saying this to you, but I would, it, it's not like I, I think she should go back on the drugs, but you, you have to weigh out. Like I, I work with people like this all the time. I used to work with people like this all the time. People would take their drugs off of drugs and then, or cats, and then they would come in and see me and they would just be a sleeping mess, like a mess, like, like look like chopped liver. And I would say, we got to put them back on a drug. Right. And they'd be like, yeah, we came to you because you're, you're a holistic practice. And I'm like, absolutely. But I'm also a practice about not suffering. Yeah. And, and, and we have to find that happy medium. Okay. It's almost like we got to put her back on the drug. Just, okay, I still, I still have the bottle. Well, I can't tell you to do that though, right? Like I can't tell you how to do that. Where I would honestly go, do you have a good relationship with your vet? Uh, my vet retired, uh, he closed his practice down and there's no holistic vet in Alaska. I have okay. looked, I've been to multiple. Um, they all just want to put her on Abiquil and side a point and yeah. just say that that's her for life. Okay, no, 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 no. Good Lord. Um, yeah. So, so Steph put, put Katie's thing in too, because Katie, Katie is a vet, right? That can do consults with you and she'll be able to tell you what dose to put her on and then a really slow weaning off of while Sarah is working on it from a perspective of diet and, and homeopathic remedies. And I would honestly do that. It sounds like a lot of work, but it's going to be, I can't tell you how much it's going to help having like two, two thing, like two people working on it like that. And then once you get her, she might even not even tell you to use Apoquil. She might use some other drug. That's why I'm saying like, don't put her back. Don't just put her back on okay. Apoquil. Okay. I was like, oh, cause she's Maybe. such suffering so much though. I know, like, but maybe she'll use 
uh, prednisolone or maybe she'll use prednisone or she'll maybe she'll use I don't know she might she might use another um, immunosuppressive drug like I, I don't know what she'll use so there might be one that she feels is better and and weans better than apical so I would do that for 100% for sure I would do that so I should use none of these then no leaky gut no no yeast yeast no so no, no. I got, the flora. I got, I got it all. <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. And don't worry. You can take everything back, right? So don't, don't freak out. Oh, don't, okay. don't, don't worry. I would be definitely using Phytos Energy. I would okay. definitely be using Phytos Flora, and I would probably be doing the Leaky Gut Protocol every okay. third day. Okay. Okay. And did you do the anti-vax with the protocol yet, or not yet? I I skipped it because I because she hadn't been vaccinated in so long. I didn't even think about oh the rabies. God. She was so young. Tomorrow okay. you can do that. Okay, so do I stop everything for the and then give her just that for the two days? No, just give it to her. Okay, just give it to her because because it's gonna like she may have even had a reaction to her first initial vaccine. Yeah. Right, and then the the rabies one put her over the edge. She could be really just super vaccine sensitive. So okay. I, that's what I would do. And then the other thing that I would do for her ears is, is you can buy, and you know, I've, I mean, I've just seen it work so well. It's called Zymox. And I've seen buy, that. Okay. Zymox. I saw that every told me not to get it because it was okay. Let's say it was what? Um, it was in a uh, one of those abacal groups that they, they don't recommend anything like not natural and da 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 da. And well, first I of went, all, there's two types of it. There's one okay. with steroids and there's one without. Okay. So you want to get the enzyme without steroids. Without. There it is. Hydrocortisone free. No hydrocortisone. Yeah. So there's okay. there's one with, but it's so inexpensive. I yeah, it's on it, Amazon. And I would buy I would buy a small bottle of both of them. I'd buy the one with the hydrocortisone and I would buy the one without because okay. there it is there. Okay. So is that, that's the ear solution or is it the enzyme? Take it out I'm of the sorry. box. I'll be able to tell if you take it out of the box. Yeah, that's it. So, so I would, I would get that. And the reason like you don't want cortisone, like I'm, I'm so against, suppressive drugs but if we can get her ears that yeah. are so that her ears aren't bugging her and we have to use a small amount of hydrocortisone just to get her some relief with her ears at least it's not like all all steroids go systemically i don't care what anyone says if it's on your skin it goes systemically but it's still not you're still not taking it internally it's still the the less of two evils right yeah yeah so at least you could pro you could try using just the regular one and see if it works. But at least if you've got the one on hold with the with the hydrocortisone in it, it might give her some relief. But this dog has to get some relief. I don't care, you know. I'm as natural as they come, and I am like hardcore with stuff. But I don't care what groups say what. You need to get this dog some relief. You need to talk to a vet, and you need to have something put in place to give her some relief and then okay. then you you do that whole your your you you get some relief you start putting in the natural products so it's like relief 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 natural products and then you start going this is the drugs okay and then you start going like this yeah so then your your as she's getting vitally stronger and as you're ridding her from all her vaccine issues and when you're ridding her from, from her high cortisol levels because she's in so much pain and distress, then you can just take her off, right? And then you take her off and she doesn't have that flip and rebound effect. I, yeah. I, I appreciate all of these groups immensely. I appreciate them so much but every single dog is an individual. Every single dog on this planet is an individual. And what you're doing to your dog right now is not going to fix her. Got you. What's gonna fix her is 
is integrative veterinary medicine. Integrative medicine, where you're doing both at the same time, and then as she's getting stronger, you take away the, the, the drug, but at the same time, if you're giving her liver tonic, which is in the leaky gut protocol, you're yeah, going- it was also in the, it's also, I was using it also with the, um, the other one, the um, yeasty which, beast. Which is, yes. So, so if she's on the drug, if Dr. Kangas puts her back on a drug, you're, you're, mitig you're, medi you're, you're mitigating the side effects. So you're not just throwing the baby out with the bathwater, right? You're, you're, you're giving her relief. You're bringing her cortisol levels down. You're supporting her liver. You're strengthening her vital force. You're telling her body how she needs to heal. And then you're starting to take her off the drugs. So that once she's off the drugs, it's not going to be like taking your finger out of a, out of a, out of yeah, a, no, I, I heard it could be bad, but this was just, wow, it was over, wow. And that's not a heal, and you know what? A lot of people are like, oh, it's a healing crisis, and oh, it's, you know, it's got to get better before it gets worse. You know what, guys? It, that's not true. It's not true. That, that doesn't have to happen. They don't have to go through stress to get better. Like, you don't have to do that. You, there's a lot easier, there's a lot easier ways. And I'd like to see some of these people saying, oh, it's a healing crisis and they have to get better before they get worse. I'd like to see you ripping your skin off and someone controlling whether you can have a drug or not. Like, I don't like drugs. I hate drugs. But sometimes they have a place. And I wouldn't have put her on drugs to begin with, right? So if you brought her into my clinic initially, she wouldn't have gone on drugs. But she's gone on drugs. So now we have to deal with her going on drugs. Even for that short amount of period, even the, just the two months? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Right. Don't, don't cry. I I say, <laughs> cry your eyes out. It's fine. Um, don't get discouraged. You what was funny was she was actually um, my um, gift. Um, my husband went and got her from Miami. Um, I got her because I had a uh, diverticulitis diagnosis three oh. days prior to, prior to my first burst, three days. I, I knew, and then I was, woke up with, you know, the, the bag and everything, and then they did a rehookup, and I actually had a second burst. And so they had to have one on the other side. And so I actually got her as a gift after I, um, they removed half my intestines and I pulled through and got to reading on the leaky gut because of Luna, my dog, and realized that oh my gosh, this is probably what I had. <laughs> and so I'm also wondering what you take of these products yourself because I would love to incorporate them for myself. I take, I take gut soothe, liver tonic, and phytosynergy every day. Okay. Yeah. It's good to know. All right. You have been a major help. I was literally thinking it was just going to get worse before it got better. And I was just, come on, baby, we got this. And it's like every day it's just like, oh, two no. steps back two steps back get the zymox in her get a hold of sarah start her on the th on the antivax now get a hold of dr kangas and 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 you'll it should be okay like so send the yeasty beast back don't use that no more no you know why what's happening is because <clears throat> she's having too big of a yeast die off yeah she's 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 going okay here's my disease my disease is going to be like, you suppressed me for two months. Now it's gonna, I'm two years old and I'm really vital and I'm going to throw this mess out as fast as I possibly can. And I'm going to get strong and I'm going to kill off this yeast. And then there's going to be 30 times more toxins than, than ever before. Like she's just going to be a mess. She, she is. Just, she, she, needs, is. She, needs to, she needs to have integrative veterinary care right so now. i need to fight we need to yeah, figure out something else to kill the yeast besides this product then okay okay so, no 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 doesn't okay. mean that she's not going to go but she will probably go back on yeasty beast okay. once you guys have her stable i think i've used about half of it on her and then switched over just last you week can, to you know what? don't like you can hold on to it and talk to dr kangas because dr kangas okay. actually uses our products Okay. And she'll be able to say, and just say that, you know, if she wants to, if you, if you've got a hold of her, 
I know Sarah really well. If both of them want to call me and I can give them my two cents, I would be happy to do that. Okay. Also about her just eating turkey. Should I just increase her whole meal to, to everything? I, I do feed part, part kibble and part raw. I would try to not feed any kibble. It's hard to do bone up here just because of, I know it's Alaskan. We hunt, but there's not a lot of just rabbits and, you know, just right laying around. And I live in the city, so it's not easy to get. Not easy to get what? Bone? Uh, to get like whole bone, like animals and to, to, to do all that. Yeah. Um, diet wise, um, it's kind of hard without the bone and the, and the, and the, um, the, the, the liver and stuff like that. And you can't get a balanced diet on its own? Um, I, it's been hard because our, one of our major stores up here is just like our Costco and it's, it's, they have, sometimes they don't carry certain things. Like I'm feeding her only turkey right now, just because that's what I thought I should do. And you know, it's very hard to find turkeys when it's not Thanksgiving in Alaska. <laughs> and are you feeding bone with the turkey? No, no, oh. just the raw, just the, just the hamburger, like the organic, um, um, like shredded, like turkey yeah. you buy in a package. No, you can't do that. You can't just, okay. no, you, okay. So for right now, what I would do is I would, can you get bone broth? Okay. Can you, can you get bone broth? I make it myself with the turkeys, with the okay. bones. So, so, so give her bone broth over her kibble. Get the, get the, um, um, <coughs> like the whole leaky gut protocol. Like I said, every, every, every second or third day and get a hold of Dr. K get this phytosynergy into her because that's, that's nutrients. And then get a hold of Dr. When, when you talk to Sarah or you talk to Dr. K Sarah's Sarah will be able to tell you how to balance her food. Okay. Properly with what you have. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh my gosh. You're answered so many questions that I was just, I thought I was doing so good. You are doing good. Oh my God. You're doing fine. You, you have a really difficult case. You have a really, really difficult case. You're, you're doing the fact that you're even hanging in there and not jumping off a bridge. You're doing well. You're doing really well. It's hard to watch. It's, it's, it's watching them like that. It's like watching them be tortured. Is that yeah, terrible? The, the man terrible. says I was fight, fight. He says, you think you're going to cure her, don't you? And I'm like, I do. And he goes, I don't think so, honey. I'm like, ah. You will. Yeah. You will. All right. With anything to do with the smell, because also one thing is when I wash her is when, um, and I use a, 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 a holistic shampoo and it's like all expensive and great. But every time I wash her, just because she smells so bad, the, the, the hot spots come out like nobody's business. After you wash her? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's because you're washing all our microbiome off. Okay. okay. Don't wash I just, cause, I, She stinks <laughs> so bad. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I know. So <laughs> why don't you try this? Why don't you just try chamomile tea? And I did. Tea. I got that. I got green tea and, and tea. chamomile tea. Okay. And she did and the then, same thing. Same wait, thing. She, oh, she breaks out with that even. Huge patches of her behind her ears just left after I did the tea. Oh, my God. Yeah, she's a mess. Yeah. Then so I... Just, I just She's plug the nose. Like a gremlin, don't feed, don't give her water after midnight. <laughs> you know what? You just have to grin and bear it with the smell for a little bit. All right. I know it's brutal, but. It is. Um, imagine right. being her. Yeah, All right. I, I, I know. I know. All right. Well, thank you so much. You're saving and yeah, her. Yeah, even our love bug mask. That's like Kaylin, Kaylin just put in there. Um, oh, love bug mask, a bath. Mask. I have love bugs too. I actually have that. It's one of the first you things I got. Try, you could try doing a mask on her. Yeah. Like love bugs with like, I have, um, I heard you say something about a kefir bath. Yeah. That, she'll that. put, can, uh, Stephanie will put it in the chat for you. Okay. Thank you so much. You're thank welcome. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I love you. Love you too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right. You got Julie. I'm calling it. Holy we almost did it again. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Um, for uh, Randy, the love bug mask is available in our Facebook group. I have it posted in there. Here's the link to it. And if not, just shoot me a private message on Facebook and I'll be happy to send it to you or email me staff at adoredbeast.com and I'll give you a hand.
Thank you everyone for hanging out tonight. That was awesome. Thanks always, Julie. We appreciate it. Okay. See you later, everyone. Oh, see you next week. Sarah is going to be on with us. Yeah. And we're talking equine nutrition. Thank you. Night, night. Bye. Yeah, bye everybody. Night, night.